Hello everyone, Wylock here. Welcome back. Today we're going to make some volcanic scatter terrain. I'm going to make some lava chimneys and some volcanoes. Originally I was going to do two episodes, but they share so much in common that I figured I'd just do it in one. Some notable gems to look out for today for you terrain making newbies. I'm going to try a little more wet blending like I did for the Underdark scatter a few episodes back. And also a nifty ancient wargamers trick to make glowing smoke. And at the very end, I've set up an epic scene for you with a few giant mechs taking on a ton of Tyranid bugs. So that said, let's go to the cutting mat. Where else to begin but with chipboard? Actually, this time around, you could use anything. Corrugated cardboard, foam board, whatever. This is the stuff at the back of a legal pad, but you can buy it in bulk like I do. There's a link in the video description below. But anyways, you pick your base, then you get some paper towel cores and toilet paper cores. Just cut one to whatever height you prefer, and then cut out a base of the size that you prefer, although I recommend at least a half inch perimeter around the tube. Then some hot glue around a rim and attach it to the base. Then trace out and cut a piece to fit inside the tube. Take a small scrap and hot glue it to the center with a small dab of hot glue. Let that totally cool and now you can hold this piece in place as you apply some hot glue to fasten it inside the tube, near the top, maybe 5 millimeters down. Once that sets, you can just tear away the handle and then add in some hot glue to the surface and tease it around with the nozzle to make a chaotic swirling texture. Here's a couple quick permutations. Take two sections of tube, cut them each down the middle, and hot glue their edges together to make a much larger diameter chimney. Easy. Or how about this, take a large and small section, bisect the smaller one, and glue it to the larger one like this to make like cascading pools of lava. Here's a bunch of them all based and hot glued and textured. You can see I mixed it up. Some have two or three chimneys. There's one irregularly shaped one in the back there. Do try and mix it up, no two alike. For texturing this, I decided to try sculpt the mold. I was gonna use DM Scotty's 50-50 white glue and water plus toilet paper slurry, like back in episode 124 with that underdark scatter. But with how much I need here, we're talking a lot of material, plus it would take about a week to dry out. But the main problem is shrinking with that white PVA glue. So, bought 15 bucks for this bag, never tried it, gonna give it a whirl. But first, I want some irregular rolling mounds in the ground and to kind of taper where the chimney meets the base. So I just got some rocks from my backyard and I'm gonna hot glue those on as desired. Here's all of them with the rocks added on. This will be easier and quicker drying than trying to pile up a ton of sculpta mold. Instead, it can form around these rocks. Plus they add some weight to the pieces, which is always nice. So it says two parts sculpt a mold to one part water. So two parts sculpt a mold and one part water. Mix it up a bit with a popsicle stick and then use that stick to spread it on. A few things I learned, two to one is the right ratio. You get a wet mix that's about the consistency of cottage cheese. It starts to slake after about five minutes, but a few drops of water mixed in will reactivate it so you can keep on working. That said, I think small batches are definitely ideal here. I probably mixed up 10 or 12 of these half solo cup sized batches. Here they are all done and drying. Really excited about that instant texture. This product is very lumpy. It says it can be used for casting. I don't know about that, but it's perfect for ground texture. After 24 hours, they were almost totally dry, so just to be safe, I gave them another 24 hours. And it is rock solid, did not shrink, no cracking, no warping, the bases are still perfectly flat. How did it take me so long to discover sculpt mold Okay, from there, a solid black base coat on everything. I like to brush on acrylic craft paint because spray paints are usually not a true black, they're like a fuzzy, really dark gray. Then going to take a dark gray and do an overbrushing. So you dip the brush in the paint, but then you work most of it right back off onto the palette, and then keep the brush at an extreme angle with fairly low pressure so that the bristles only catch the high points of all that texture.
Then take a very light gray and repeat that process, except this time much more selective and an even lighter touch than before. Voila, freshly cooled lava rock. Now take your hot glue gun and use it to create lava flows burbling out of the chimney and flowing down the side. As before, texture it with the tip of the hot glue gun. Actually, after doing this first one, I realized it doesn't look quite right, so I took some pliers to just rip away at certain portions of the rim and make it level with the surface of the lava, then create the lava flow. Now I'm about to show you two ways to paint the lava itself. The first way is easy and doesn't look as good. The second way is me trying out some new techniques for the first time here, and I think turned out a lot better. Go back to that light gray and use it to paint a solid base coat on all the lava. Light gray is a good base coat for yellows because unlike white, it usually only takes one coat to cover. And then when you paint the yellow, you'll only need one coat of that, as compared to trying to paint yellow directly over black, which is the absolute worst. Anyway, then you paint the solid yellow over that. Don't worry if you have an errant bristle go off the hot glue flow because hey, now it's just object source lighting. Then with orange, do an overbrush of the lava. So just like before, you keep it at an extreme angle so that the ridges catch the paint, but underneath is still yellow. And then red, again, an overbrush, but even lighter than the orange. And finally, black. Again, an overbrush, but literally as light as you can, and be selective and sporadic about where you strike. Now I got as far as setting all this up on the table for my end of episode showcase portion, right? The fly through I usually do. And at that point I just realized, eh, something's just not right. So to Google image search I go, and noted that generally in a lava flow, the center is gonna be brighter and the perimeter is gonna be reddish, turning black because it's hardening and cooling. So I figured I'd take a shot at that. Rewind a few steps to the point where you base the lava with pure yellow. Then while the paint's still wet, so you're working kinda quickly here, take your orange and paint it on solidly so that you leave a, a small amount of yellow in the center, like this. And you can see I'm dropping down there pretty thickly, chasing it all around the perimeter, and then brush to the water glass, swish it out, doesn't matter if it's dirty. And then I wring out some of the water on the lip of the glass. And this part you kinda gotta get the knack for. There's a certain amount of water you do want on the brush. Uh, and what you're about to see is I have too much water. Start dabbing at that boundary where the orange meets the yellow. And the water sort of flows on there, mixes the two, and you sort of stipple and work it back and forth and it creates the gradient. Now again, too much water here. This was like the first attempt I had ever made. Here's an example of another piece I did. This was a much smaller piece, so it's a smaller brush. Uh, again, a little too much water, but then you can see it sort of starts to thicken. It's picking up some paint as it goes. Use that to your advantage. You're just kind of going back and forth, sort of poking at it until it pops. And you'll see it. And when it does, that's when you want to stop messing with it. Then I took my solid red and same thing, I'm going to the outermost perimeter and overlapping with the orange a little bit. Then again, with a damp brush, start poking at it to sort of blend the two boundaries together where the orange meets the red. Because I'm redoing this, anywhere I had nicked yellow on the stone, I'm putting red there instead. And you can see this blend actually starts to come out pretty nice once it settles together. Here again is on a larger scale with a larger brush. Now here, I had figured out pretty much the right amount of water to have on the brush. And you can see it's not turning into a mess, but it's also not stippled. It's like it's, it's creating a real nice transition between the orange and the red. So there it is dry. Last step, I am going to use the black again and do a little bit of dry brushing, just sort of nick some of those ridges on the outer outermost perimeter where the red touches the rock. Yep, just subtle. And so there's the final result. That high contrast gradient creates the illusion of an intense glow. I made a ton of these and I'm going to show them to you in situ on a table, but first let's take these concepts and go make a volcano. As it turns out, tea lights fit pretty good inside of paper towel cores, so we'll keep that in mind and we'll set those aside. 
cut out a base for the volcano, and I'm using corrugated cardboard for this, but foam board would work just fine as well, or MDF. Then attach the core to the center using hot glue. Using more corrugated cardboard, or whatever material you're using, cut out some forms and hot glue them in place. So these are 90 degree corners connected with an irregular diagonal. Hot glue them in place so that you have about a 3 inch gap between them at the outer rim of the base, like this. Then, white PVA glue, such as Elmer's, mixed with water about 50-50. Drench paper towel in it and then lay it over the volcano. Probably take six or seven sheets to cover it all. Set it on a can over a protective mat or newspaper so that the excess glue water can drip down without worry. So here it is drying and I'll be honest it took a good three or four full days until it was totally bone dry and crisped up. The substructure is done and now it's time to texture it. Again I used Sculpt-A-Mold. Mix it up and spread it all over the volcano. So in about a day that was fully hardened and from here on out, again this is identical to the lava chimneys, we're going to do a solid base coat of black, overbrush with a dark gray, and then a very selective overbrush with light gray. Create the lava flows using hot glue and paint the lava by basing it gray and then yellow, then overbrushing with orange, red, and black. For the smoke plume, we use an ancient war gamers technique. Get some polyfill, this bag was like three bucks from the crafting store. Pull out a tuft and glue it to the tea light. Then hit it with some black spray paint. When you do this, experiment with how far away the can is from the plume. The farther away, the more sporadic it will look, which I think is preferable. Then with a clear sealant, spray it. I like to go crazy here to spray on a lot of it. Once the fibers start to look a little bit clouded because there's so much, that's where you stop. From here you might nick at it with your lava colors. I chose not to because I might use these plumes in other applications. The channel Mini Wargaming has a great demonstration on this. I made two volcanoes and in a moment I'll show them to you on a fully dressed out table, but real quick, my usual panoply of please. If you like the video, why not hit the like button? Better yet, subscribe. And on top of that, if you decide you want to support the channel in a totally free way, consider using my Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Doesn't change your experience at all, the only difference is I get a small kickback for having referred you. And for all you 3D printers out there, Wylox Crafting Vids is sponsored by Heroes Horde, which has an excellent range of high quality models, including but not limited to all True Tiles lines, which are open lot compatible. Also, check out my modules over on the DMs Guild, and remember, $3 patrons get free copies of all my releases. Alright, first up, as usual, the board with no models, just to highlight the terrain. Other stuff you see on this table, the generic crags from episode 96, and the realm gate from episode 79. And all of this is on a frontline gaming map. I feel like these gradients were a good first step for myself. They're pretty striking in person. You'll see at points in this video here, the contrast is so intense that it messes with the focus on the camera. I think those nicks of black on the perimeter help sell the idea that the outermost lava is cooling. And again, Sculpt-A-Mold. I cannot believe it took me so long to discover this product. Here's a smaller one, which is really pretty much just intended for decoration since it's too small to block a line of sight or anything like that. I am thinking that whenever I have these on the table, I'll treat them as being infinitely tall, so like smoke is pouring out of them simulated, right? So they will block a line of sight at least. And then if any model steps on them, just treat them as dangerous terrain, or whatever the rule in your war game of choice uses. This one here, I was particularly happy with how this one came out. I don't know if it was just the right amount of water in the brush or what, but the blends just sort of came out real good on that one. This one here was actually the very first one I built with the cascading pools. Again, if you feel like your gradients aren't as smooth as you like and they look a little bit stippled, don't drain so much water out of your brush. Then when you stipple, it will run down onto the piece and cause a slurry and give you that gradient. And now here it is with three Imperial Knights doing cleanup duty on some Tyranids. These are actually going to be making their battle report debut on my channel pretty soon, but for now I'm just going to sort of shut up and let you enjoy the scenery.
If you liked this particular project, here's two more that you should go check out right now. Also, enjoy this community showcase. And don't forget to subscribe and click that bell reminder icon. I am Wylock, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.